people, my people, people, my followers, and those who subscribe, and you're all my people, because I hold you all dear to my liver. You're my sort of people because you enjoy a great gin. And today, I travel. Oh, thank God that COVID's coming to an end. I really want to travel. Someone just send me airline tickets to somewhere exotic, please. Short of that, travel by gin. Not time travel, not bear plane travel, gin travel. So I am going to a distillery that I found recently because I went to the uh, craft market at Point Nepean at the quarantine station unexpectedly and lo and behold there was actually there were two distilleries there. No, sorry, three. Three gin distilleries. It was it was a, a gin heavy um, market which made me extremely happy. So I went to three cuts. Uh, they're basically outside Launceston which is kind of the biggish town in northern Tasmania. It's the ferry from Melbourne, or better be Geelong, goes to Devonport and if you go to Devonport and turn left, I'm sitting you bump into Launceston. Gateway to the great wildernesses down the southwest where there's just amazing trekking. So I went there, I found these guys. Um, in the write-up and the wizards that I put here, I might um, actually explore where they actually get the name from. It might be the fact that um, Three cuts of this and your your well and truly cut. But let's see how this baby goes. So sound of happiness. Oh, it's a dry gin. That's so uh, yeah. You, you, those of you who know me can know that the, the love is building. It's, it's a dry gin. Yeah, lots of juniper and coriander in this baby. Mmm. It's a classic dry gin. Right, I'm going to put my um, professors on and I'm going to read the write up. The information they have on the side of bottles. Uh, bespoke gin is made from scratch in small batches in Tasmania, carefully distilled from premium grape base. Pure Tasmanian water and a unique blend of Tasmanian grown and internationally sourced botanicals. Uh, it's got juniper, coriander, hint of peppercorn, and three cats of rose malt. Of a rose. So that's where three cats comes off. Um, okay. Use flash. Um, and. The simple fact of the matter is, none of those ingredients are actually Tasmanian in origin. Okay, none of them are, are indigenous. Not what, juniper is an exotic. Um, the Australian juniper version of juniper simply it does not have enough strength in it to become viable. Um, because I know of a couple of distillers have actually tried to do it, and I think the common name for Australian juniper would be Muntries. So the Australian indigenous juniper just doesn't make it as much as the exotic stuff does. Coriander, Cor coriander is in no way, shape, or form in Australian gin, uh, sorry, Australian herb. Um, and as for roses, um, we know pretty well exactly to the day when the first rose arrived in Australia because um, the roses, the wonderful you know, things that you buy for women that you're in love with or men you're in love with, um, they're exotic. They're actually, um, I think, Central Asian in origin off the top of the old grandmother. I shall scratch it and stimulate some more further facts. So, newsflash is, is that this gin's made in Tasmania, and I have no doubt about it. I spoke to a Tasmanian when I bought it, um, but none of the ingredients short of the water are actually Tasmanian in origin. Having said that, that's just the picky, 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 picky aspect of me being an Aspie. We're going to see if she actually does the job and makes a killer GNT. So, regular glass, regulation. Ice cube, good healthy amount of this. And today I'm drinking it with Fever Tree Mediterranean. Um, and we shall see how this goes. It's what I mean. We've already established that it's a nice dry gin. So, yeah. So, the beautiful cans from Fever Tree, which make Life very easy for me because I don't have to go worrying about how much I've actually added enough 
a little bit. I just add one of these suckers and yep, sorry. This is right on the edge of being over full. Oh. If you like your, your juniper hit, and Lord knows we all do, because we, we like gin, we like the juniper, it's a medicinal aspect, I know. That's the reason why you drink it. It's not because the wonderful botanicals that I keep on giving you. It's the fact that gin is a health tonic that makes you just feel good. Makes you know, cures a couple of problems in the world. So the juniper with this um, is straightforward. It is just nails it. Um, Oh, honey. Now, being the observant child I am, I actually noticed the other day that there was indeed writing on these cans. And I noticed on the front, it says citrus and fresh. Um, tasting notes, lemon thyme with a citrus twist. Which we can't like explain the reason why um, I'd be noticing that there was a strong citrus flavor in all the gins that I, would, I had been drinking with this. I know. I love it when I'm blindingly fast like this. It just takes my breath away that I can ignore the blindingly obvious because it's not like every damn can doesn't have it on it. And I just completely miss it for six months. I, I, I love it. Um, you can hear my ex-wife cackling in the background going, you're an idiot. Um, but that's just my ex-wife and she thought that before I divorced her anyway. So yeah, big on the juniper, the citrus, absolutely. Um, we are finally, hopefully, going to come into a whole lot of hot weather in Melbourne um, because oh, I'm just sick to death, freezing my ass off. I did it um, today, Thursday. Yeah, yesterday I went to an um, athletic event for my eldest and stood there turning blue for four hours whilst he went out and picked up a couple of trophies. <sighs> Sorry. So. I'm looking forward to that long hot summer that I know is out there because my bones are just tired of being cold. And this is going to be great drinking it. Um, you get a big bottle of this baby, which is identical, just bigger, twice the size, I think. Oh, how big is this? Which means that this is quite large. This is. 350 ml, so it's a half bottle. So get one twice the size. Um, and I can see a real mess being made of a hot summer's day. This, um, just even as I've done it now, and I, as we all know by watching a lot of these videos, and I suggest you go back and watch the ones, previous ones, um, I do incredibly simple GNTs. It's the same damn drink every week. Uh, why? Because that way I've got. The benchmark to um, compare it against and this would make a lethal way to get rid of a um, hot summer stack um if you sit you know <laughs> actually this would make a lethal way to get, get rid of much caring about much of anything um because oh yes yes children just go and trash the house i've just got to help myself to another one of these and yes darling yes darling i i will go out and paint your grandparents house next week yes darling of course um that's what would happen if i started drinking a big bottle of this on a Scorching hot day. So, we've established that the juniper is there, the coriander is there. With this particular tonic water, it's a nice, clean, crisp citrus hit, which makes it perfect for that stinking hot day. What would I eat it with? Um, what would I pair it with? Maybe I may have another nice big citrus hit while I consider that. There is a saying, well, what goes really well with gin? Gin. Um, <laughs> when there's too much gin, never enough. I, sorry.
are such a pronounced citrus um, juniper melons. I'd go oysters. Um, I think if I was to give up my vegetarianism and go out and grab a nice, one of those nice big fat juicy suckers, you know, the, the oysters are, you know, the oyster itself is about this long. So you, you get the whole salty maritime vent, whack it in your hatch, sip on, make take a mouthful of this one, and you just get the whole, whole just bang in your head. Um, the mouth would just practically detonate um, with uh, flavors and the whole maritime, you know, sea, sea business, the lemon, it would just be extraordinary. Um, and yeah, time would pass very quickly as a result. Um, and so would a couple of dozen of oysters and you'd more likely get trundled out the front. Um, that's all I would, would eat it with is just fresh oysters, just, you know, just or natural, just, you know, one, like, a, like a nice big, um, oyster in your, in your hatch and then go one of these and, and that's it. Um, you might as well just put up the extremely happy camper flag. Um, so the fat kid, yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like I said, um, it's a great gin. It is going to be one of these superb drinkings on a hot summer's day, um, when we can't really be stuffed doing much at all, apart from drinking great gin. Yeah, I know you've just pointed out the fact that that's seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year type of it. What, what do we like doing? We like drinking gin. We like drinking a lot of good quality gin. So my one thing is that if I was them, I would just not make claim to having too, all that many Tasmanian ingredients in it. There are none, apart from the water. But then water's substantial. I mean, you know, they use water to help in the distillery and then when they get it to about 90%, they use Tasmanian water to thin it back out to a um, non-toxic level or a level where you don't get completely brain damaged in about 10 seconds. So yeah, I guess a major ingredient would be Tasmanian. Um, yeah, just extraordinarily good drinking. As continues, my, you know, my, my good run continues. Yeah, next week, I'm going to explore the other gin that I have with this, which is the... It's the Pritchard Damn Glasses on Odin. That's what it is. It's the Founders release. So I'm possibly doing them best backwards. More likely should have done this one first. Um, either way, uh, I'll catch you next week. Thank you for watching. Please do it more often. You know, it is capable of actually setting this up on playlists and just going off to work and do something constructive while it plays or makes me look good. Uh, that is entirely possible. So thank you for, for watching subscribe follow share comment suggestions um next week if you allow me one moment i will not be wearing my customary shirt because having given you a good look at the all the good quality gins that i've managed to drink in the last year or so i'm actually reviewing a pink Gin. So next week, I'm going to be wearing a pink shirt. Now, with this particular gin, baby, um, rose, Roseberry Pink Gin, I can tell you now, a little secret, it is completely owned and run by women. Um, and no, I'm not going to wear a free pink dress, <laughs> thank you very much. You, this, how dare you suggest that? Um, I will whoever be wearing my one pink shirt. Okay, so that's going to be the week after. Um, as you can tell by the amount in the bottle, I ain't even given so much as a sip on this baby. Um, and I think that the other half actually was the one who had to try at the uh, farmer's market where I bought all these gins from. Either way, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week with my pink gin and um, we'll see how that goes. Oh, sorry. Three cuts the week after it's pink gin. So you got something to look forward to. Same time, same action all next week. I like to say, go out and sin. You drink wisely because if you don't sin, Jesus died for nothing and you don't drink more. You just simply drink quality like this stuff. Catch ya. Thanks for watching. Bye.